everybody, with great pleasure and honor to meet you again. And this in natural Nordic uh, natural Nordic Natural Product Conference in Norway, June 2021. And I'm going to discuss a story about bee products. I hope you will like it. And the title of my lecture, it is about unrevealing the beehive air volatile profiles as analyzed via solid phase micro extraction, SPME and chemometrics. We will start about what is the interest of bee products? And is it known recently or from very long time ago? Let us see what has been done throughout the history. So it has been found that in since 1450 BC in Luxor in Egypt is that it was written in the temples about pea products. In recent years, uh, the great mathematics and scientist who we all know about is Hippocrates. He who lived nearly 100 years, he, it says that he has been using honey. So it means that honey is important or not. I will take the story from the beginning. And to be honest and frank, since 10 years ago, I know that bee product is, is only honey. And I didn't even know why honey could be yellow, why it can be also honey with different colors. And it's only one product as we can know. It is different products like bee venom, bee wax, bee bread, bee pollen, propolis, royal jelly. And it happened a very good, uh, I would say, excellent uh, incident for me at that time that Aida Abdel Wahid from the uh, research center in she came to me and she asked me to work in pea products. I don't know nothing about pea products. But since I am a chemist and like to work in natural products, I liked the idea. We started to think about it and started to do literature survey. We found that many biological properties has been discussed through thousands of literatures antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antivirus, anti-cancer, anti-diabetics. Moreover, that the bee product is, has several applications in medical as well, especially about epitherapy, for example, and the treat wound healing by honey. Also, it's used after surgical operations, as you can see, or for uh, dermatology, diseases. So additionally, it is used in cosmetics and the pharmaceutical formulations, creams, etc. It has been used as against traumatoids. Even there is, we can say, natural pharmacy in Greece, and it is called Abivita, and it is the first natural cosmetics company in Greece since 1979, and it's called the Abivita, which means the life of the bee. All these attracted me to work on it. And we will see if this will be a successful story or not. This, I can leave you the answer by the end of my lecture. As a scientist, our dream that we find a drug. Of course, we start with ethnopharmacology or traditional medicine. This is the key point, very important, because it gives us a guide about our directions. And this is what happened exactly in this project. After that, we are, as a chemist, to do extraction in, in parallel with bioassay, using uh, the art techniques of chromatography and spectroscopy to get the bioactive compound. And to get the drugs, this takes tens of years. And this is the dream of everybody. And it happened rare, like the Nobel Prize, which is in 2015. Then we take this idea about uh, uses in traditional medicine about beehive air. Is the beehive air could treat diseases like asthma, respiratory infections, etc. This was the question. 
And to do that, what is the scientific proof of the efficiency? It, is, it was lacking, which warns further chemical and biological analysis. And this is, is our rule. What is the scientific evidence? What is, what is the reasons of chemistry and biology regarding this idea? If we could find it, this will help us definitely to trust to use such a technique. So what happened? Let us see what happened that uh, we did further. So how and why? So for the first time, we take the B have volatile profiles, which was determined along with its individual components from B, B venom, honey, and B wax. The question, so does B have air has antimicrobial activity? This means that it is, it is active and the people can use it. If it is not, the people cannot use it. So, this is a conclusion. If we can take the behave and with, throw, uh, with using the technique of SBME, further and then analysis by GCMS analysis, then what is, uh, 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 what is the chemical constituent is? So identify the bioactive compound in the beehive air. So this is a protocol of work. So we take the bee product is propolis, behave air, uh, beehive air, royal jelly, bees, bee wax, bee bread, honey, then inj inject uh, to GCMS analysis through SBME, then by using the technique of PCA and the AMDIS program connected to NIST database library to see the identification of the chemical constituents. Then, what was the result? Is? This is interesting. From just to note that the initial screening revealed a very weak aroma profile of honey and propolis, royal jelly, and the bee bread. This is what we found out. Compared to the behave air and its components, which is venom, wax, and insect. So this was the scientific first evidence. Furthermore, the analysis of the remaining three, uh, in addition to beehive air, when analyzed by GCMS techniques and the further identification, this was the result which we obtained. And uh, it was 56 volatile compounds were identified as a total of bee hive air, bee insect, bee venom, and bee wax using the techniques which I have uh, uh, explained. And these 56 compounds was, were as fatty acids, alcohols, aldehydes, esters, ether, hydrocarbons, and phenols. So several types of compounds. Then we started to see what is the most abundant volatile compound is. It is fatty acid, ketone, uh, aldehyde, ketone, normal hydrocarbon, alcohols, uh, aromatic methoxy, methyl salicylate, and eugenol. So this most abundant volatile compound is we found. Using the technique of this SBME and GCMS analysis for identification, as well as the, uh, the uh, program of principal component analysis, some, the insect aroma was enriched mostly in fatty acids, alcohol, and ketone compared to the beehive air. So this was the conclusion of the results. Additionally, also the 21 compounds in both beehive and the insect indicating that the hive aroma is mostly influenced by live bee. So this also a good fact that we could identify through identification of the compound is. Then let us go to the another exciting part. What is the activity? Is this will show antimicrobial activity or not? So we started to see the activity and we found out that the bee, beehive air is active comparing also with bee venom while bee wax was inactive and we compare the results with the positive control. 
then this diagram shows the activity. So this is a beehive air activity, which is less than bee venom. Of course, when it is, it means that the bee venom is more constant, containing more concentrated compounds. And this is compared to the drug control. And the last is the bee wax. This also, you can see the diameter. So here, A is bee venom. Uh, B is beehive air. Uh, C is the drug. Uh, D is honey. E is bee wax. So this was really very interesting result. It means that our expectation is correct, that the component is, has activity as antimicrobial based on scientific evidence of chemistry and biological activity. This result is, we could also uh, correlate our results with the published uh, papers containing such active compounds. I think this was a very good to conclude that 56 volatile compounds were identified from several classes of natural products. And the principal component analysis, BCA, showed that similarity of beehive air to the insect bee aroma profile. Second, that beehive air and venom exerted the strongest antimicrobial activity among the examined bee products against several my microbes. But what is the further study? This is very important that further investigation is needed. Why? To examine other biological activities of beehive air re remotely and to also determine how these volatile functions, what is really the mechanism of action and what is the role of the treatment? Do you agree with me that if the story was really interesting and what's the next step? I think we should do clinical studies also to see about our idea. Is it really correct or not? I have discussed this data during some conferences, and now I can show you also about our work in bee products. So you can see just the story which started 10 years ago. It was good or not? And the factor for us as a scientific is the uh, publications. Did we publish in this area or not? Or is it only one or two or three papers? And what is the impact factor? What kind of journals? This is good answer if the idea of Aida Abdul Wahid was successfully or not. Of course, the credit also gave, go to all, all here institute and Professor Nagla Al Ahmadi and the whole research centers. See, as you can see, several papers we published so far in the area of B products from the impact factor. All of them are in Q1, which means first class as international journals. It is even until impact factor 11.5. When I show these results, I got a very nice prize. Thank you so much for uh, is the organizing committee who gave me this prize. And uh, I think we will have some surprise for Manufia University, which I can discuss in the uh, next conference and in the next event, as to show the loyalty of my home university. I am educated in governmental school and the governmental Manufia University for free. And we will see how we can contribute back after this success of B products, which I really love it. It is also mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Nahl, B Surah, with all respect for all other religion. I am really believing in it so much, of course. On the other hand, this is the ongoing work of another. Uh, uh, type of work, which I hope to discuss in the next natural Nordic, Nordic natural product meeting, which yield every two years in the next time in Finland. And I hope that we will discuss about sea cabin, royal scene from royal jelly, another uh, uh, cytotoxic polypeptide from B-venom, and the enzymatic hydrolysis of royal jelly. 
this what I hope to discuss this kind of structures about isolation structure illustration senses this is will be the exciting and uh, also about the bioactive compounds as neuroprotective agent this is my dream to and my next hope to discuss next time in the next conference and then this is the talk, take home message is the bee product is really important and who, who who is eating bee product every day and is this is good relating also to immunity system or not i think this we can answer from the papers we have done as well as of course other papers by respected colleagues and the great scientists all over the world so i will end with this eating honey with different bee products without collaboration could we do such work definitely not so we cooperate whatever doesn't matter the gender it doesn't matter the religion it doesn't matter the country but we all work for for better for better future and we need to be back to nature we can work together and we can enjoy such lovely nature i really hope you to end with the acknowledgement of course i'm very grateful to the vr the financial support from the swedish research links and the pharmacognosy department and i already mentioned about Munich university of course in addition to dr aida abdelwahid dr suniti and professor olf Ransson. I wish you a very lovely summer in Scandinavian countries since this is a Nordic meeting. It is really very nice here in Scandinavia during summer. This is the winter, but you enjoy more. I enjoy both and even I enjoy more winter. And thank you very much for my lovely home country, Egypt. Bye bye. Assalamu